Hi, my name is Gordon Beeman and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the same editor as Visual Studio Code on your websites. In the last couple of weeks um, people have been asking me how I've integrated it into my website and therefore I thought it would make for a good a video a guide to show you how, to, you how you can use this in your websites. We'll start off by going to Visual Studio Code and we're going to create a new file index.html and here we're going to create the standard elements the html tag head tag and the body tag go ahead and add a title and just say my post with code and to make sure this runs let's go ahead and use live server you see this runs it's got our title at the top great so we're off to a good start the first thing we're going to do is go and drop in some jquery which we're going to fetch off the cloudflare cdn and we're going to fetch version 351 not that that's important but that is the version that we're going to end up putting next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some content so we're going to have an h1 tag, a paragraph, a little intro, our code block, and then another paragraph. And if we switch over to our post, you can see that's refreshed. Um, and that's what it looks like. Note at the moment, there's no colorization yet for that code. So next we're going to head over to Uh, the Cloudflare CDN again and uh, we're going to go to the Monaco editor and you can see here there's a whole heap of files you can see here if we go and grab um, the editor main CSS so we'll go and copy that, that tag and we'll go drop it in there you can see this drops it within the integrity attribute and a link to that CSS actually we'll go and put this inside the the head and then we're going to need a couple other from Cloudflare as well but I'm just going to paste them in so you see here we are fetching loader.min.js we're fetching editor main.nls.min.js and editor min.js editor main min.js we're also specifying at the top here that uh, we're specifying a path for VS and we're sending it to this path which you can see is common to each of these script tags as well as to uh, where our CSS is pulled into for Monaco. Now at this point nothing will have changed on our site, it still looks pretty much the same. If we open this up and just refresh it you can see it's obviously pulling those changes in, or well, those files in. So the next little bit that we're going to do here is we're going to add a script tag and we're going to now invoke Monaco editor. We're going to say we're going to colorize the element and the element we're going to colorize um, is this code block um, pre-tag. So go ahead and save that. You can see at this time there's still no colorization. And the reason for that is that from version 20 there seems to be a bug um, with this colorization or at least a change in behavior which has caused what seems to be a bug and you can see uh, um, with this open issue the load CSS colorization element or string basically doesn't work without the editor to show you that that is the the reason we'll switch back here go back to our demo code I'm just gonna go and switch out this quickly for version 19.3 which is the last one before this update as well as the CSS for 19.3 so now if we go and load that you can see all our code is colorized nicely the problem with this and if, what you would have noticed if you looked at my blog is that I've got line numbers here um, when I click on a property like the JSON doc it highlights it through the doc um, and that's because this is an actual editor whereas this is just colorizing the element exactly what we've told it to do 
So I'm going to go and switch this back to version 20. You don't need to use version 20. I just like making sure I'm using the latest stuff. So I've always got the latest bug fixes in there. So the bit of code that we're going to add next is going to look like this. So we're going to go and replace the use of the colorization. And instead what we're going to do and say, is say, let's grab the, the content from that code block. We're going to just set the contents of it now to be empty. We're then going to go and create a editor. So we're going to call monaco.editor.create. We're going to say create it from this element, which is that pre-tag, which is now an empty pre-tag. As part of the options, we're going to pass it a value which says um, he has the code content, which is what we've pulled recently out of that pre-tag. We're going to tell it this is the language. So in this case, we don't need this um, data lang property anymore. That was used for the colorization. We're going to tell it that we want to use the VS theme. We're going to put line numbers on. We're going to set a bunch of other properties here. You'll notice also that we're saying it's read only. Um, we're putting the mini map off and automatically out true. So it'll automatically set the height. And then what we do at the end here is we say that the line height must be 19. And the reason why we're doing it in this case is so that directly afterwards we can go and say, well, that um, element set its heart to this um, editor code block um, variable that we have, get the model, give me the number of lines, multiply that by 19, and then add 10. And you can see a little comment that says that the reason for it being 19 is because that's what we've set the line out to, and then 10 is for what the vertical scroll bar height is. Okay, so this has gone and saved, and if we look back here, at the moment, there's no code. There's also no errors. If we look in the console, you can see, sorry, at the top here, it says that Monaco is not defined. The reason for that, in this case, you'll notice when we copy this across, the default way that that copies across is just with, um, obviously, the tag itself. And something that we're missing off this tag to allow this to work properly with the editor is this little um, extra attribute, data name, VS editor, editor main. So now that we've added that in, we can go back here and you can see this loads properly. We get all the same highlighting that I mentioned. We can collapse code. Um, at the moment, we obviously can't edit that code. The reason for that is, like I mentioned, because we've set read only to false or to true. So if we go and change this to read only false, and we go in here, we can now go and edit this and that'll work properly. The other thing that we can go and do is we can switch on the minimap and you can see you get that minimap on the side um, that if you had more code. So we'll see now if we go and change these, um, this code to something a lot larger. You see that we, we get all that code in here. If we look down there it all is. But you'll notice that I had to use this page scroll bar instead of the um, editor's scroll bar. And the reason for that is because of this code that we have right at the end, uh, where the, the bottom here, which sets the height equal to the number of lines. So let's go yeah, and just say, well, let's see what happens if we take that code out, go back here. See, at the moment it's super tiny. So let's go and say, okay, we'll take that out and make this instead 400. Now you can see it loads properly and we are able to scroll using the the margin inside of the editor like you would expect. I'm going to go ahead and return this back to how it was. Okay, so if we look back here, this is again how our demo code was. We'll just go and make this read only again and switch off the minimap. Okay, so some issues that you could run into um, if you're doing this yourself is if you go ahead and put the script tags in the head like this and you reload it, you'll see you get an error. It says I couldn't add the event listener. 
which then obviously throws the gives the moniker edit, um, error again because things aren't initialized properly. That used to work in version 18.1. Um, from 19.0, things changed and that no longer works. So that's just a little heads up. If you do see that error, just make sure you have um, your script tags in your body and not in the header. Now, <clears throat> in my case, I'm referencing this off Cloudflare's uh, CDN. But if you are someone who does want to use it, you can go and put the files in yourself. So if I go and say, open up a terminal from this location, you can go and run um, npm and pull these resources in from npm as well. So I'll go and pull that same version of jQuery that we had in. And then I'll also go and pull in the Monaco editor version that we have. Okay, and then to change this, all we need to do is switch out our jQuery. So obviously, this is what the new tag looks like. So instead of us referencing it off the CDN, um, we're going to just reference it off the local, the local file. And then the same for min CSS. Oh, sorry, the the CSS. We're just going to reference it off the, the local file. And then for our script tags at the bottom we do a very similar thing notice now that this vs path has changed to just be node models uh, mo node modules moniker editor min vs so get, go ahead and save this you see that loaded again if we refresh um, but you'll notice if we re um, don't preserve that it, these files are now coming from this local path and not from Cloudflare anymore. So to get started with this, I mean, there is a heap load of um, documentation. But something you, that you could find interesting is the playground. So if you go here, yeah, it shows you how to do various different things. So if you wanted to use this um, as a diff editor, there we go. So it shows you basically say here's some code or here's some text here's some other text and diff them for me this then has a lot more advanced options as well uh, with that so we well there's a multi-line example of the same same -ish stuff you can do inline diffs basically anything that the visual studio editor could do you'll most likely be able to do with this also notice that you are able to change things um, at so this is that example I was showing where colorize doesn't work you can see in the samples it doesn't work either because this uses um, the newer um, version 20 editor if you look here as well you can see with this example you see that the numbers just popped in and this is because there's a time limit uh, that's set for two seconds and once those two seconds pass, we say, well, we want to update the options and, and put line numbers on. So if we run this again, you'll see there's no line numbers. And then the line numbers come on. So you are able to um, modify this while it's running. It's not something that you have to set at page load and sort of keep like that for the, the whole duration. Okay, that's all uh, from me for Monica Editor. Um, if you found this helpful, let me know. Share it. Um, tweet me. Um, if not, also tweet me, let me know. Um, obviously, the only way I can learn to share stuff better is through feedback. And yeah, if there's something specific you'd like me to show a guide on, let me know as well. Cheers.